Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Oriole Resources PLC pre-AGM statement and Q&A. Throughout this recorded session, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please simply type in your questions at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard and we will notify you by email when these are ready for your review. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll and if you could give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand you over to Independent Non-Executive Chair, Eileen Carr. Good morning. Thank you, Jake, and good morning to you all. <clears throat> I'll now read my statement as released this morning and then hand over to Tim to field any questions. The start of 2022 has been exceptionally busy with solid progress on our projects in Cameroon, confirmation from Iron Gold of the completion of the first phase of their earning in Senegal, refocusing of the Turkish operations and completion of the annual report, which has enabled the early and successful submission of the 2021 research and development tax claim. At Mibemi in Cameroon, we were delighted to report promising results from our third phase of diamond drilling at the Picasso Zone 1 prospect. This phase delivered mineralized intervals of up to 9.2 meters, grading 1.31 grams per tonne of gold, and 2.1 meters, grading 19.04 grams per tonne of gold, including a bonanza intersection of 1.1 meter, grading 36. 0.06 grams per tonne of gold. In addition, the soil sampling results reported earlier in the year confirmed continuity of the, assist, uh, the system southwards to the Lava West prospect, giving a confirmed strike length of almost 12 kilometres. At the central licence package, also in Cameroon, the team continues to advance its early stage exploration programme over this nearly 3,600 square kilometre package of eight contiguous licences. Building on the 2021 Regional Stream Sediment Programme, an extensive programme of semi-regional soil sampling commenced over the eastern licences, and initial results have also identified several areas of significant interest. The highest reported result to date of 838 parts per billion of gold was returned from the Mbe license within an approximate 11.5 kilometer in situ anomalous gold in soil zone. We are in the initial stages of exploration at the central license package and are delighted that the area is already confirming the promise identified during our prospectivity analysis undertaken in 2019. In Senegal, Iron Gold confirmed that it had completed the required $4 million spend to earn a 51% holding in the company's Sonala license. Iron Gold's fourth year of exploration on the license was completed at the end of Feb 2022, with further excellent results from the Fare prospect announced earlier this year, including a best interval of 5 metres, grading 12.45 grams per tonne of gold which included two metres, grading 26.61 grams per tonne of gold. We are now moving through the process of formalising the ownership position and discussing the Year 5 work programme with Iron Gold. Further announcements on each of these topics will follow in due course. In Turkey, we have successfully completed the restructuring of the business so that our legacy interests in country are still being actively managed but at a low cost to the group. The sale of a small antimony royalty in March for $22,000 and the collection of working capital balances have already generated enough funds to ensure that the Turkish operation will be cash neutral or better for 2022. We're also actively pursuing $1.4 million of overdue debts. At a corporate level, the team has been hard at work de delivering the annual report and submitting tax returns in order to bring in the £403,000 of R&D tax credits, as announced last week. This, alongside the exploration work, is a real team effort and will help drive further work in Cameroon. That concludes my statement, and I'll now hand over to Tim to take any questions you may have. Thank you. 
Eileen, that's great. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using that Q&A tab that's situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the team take a few moments to review those questions submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor dashboard. Tim, as you can see, we've received a number of questions that have both come through uh, pre-submitted ahead of today's event, as well as a number that have come throughout today's presentation itself. Firstly, thanks to all investors for submitting their questions. And Tim, if I could please just hand back to you just run through that Q&A tab and share the Q&A session and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jake. And thanks, Ernie, uh, for the intro. Um, we do have some already pre-submitted questions, as Jake mentioned. So I will uh, divvy them out to the to the management team and board uh, as, we, as, of, as appropriate. Uh, the first one, possibly one for you, Bob. Um, Please, can you explain why the director's salaries have increased? Yeah, sure. And thanks for that, Tim. Now, I believe this is a reference to the, uh, the totals in the remuneration committee report in the 2021 uh, annual report, where the 2021 figure is 395,000 and the 2020 figure was 352,000, which on the face of it looks like an increase, but in actual fact is, is all down to the fact in 2020 we had four directors. In 2021, we, we promoted Claire to the board to recognize her contribution to the company. And it's actually just that incremental half year of an extra director, which accounts for the entire difference. And, you know, in terms of individuals, um, both Tim and I came in on market salaries, probably the low end of market salaries in uh, 2018. And our salaries have not increased at all in that time. The, the only movement on them has actually been when we've uh, done salary sacrifices for equity or where we took pay cuts in 2020 to help the company through the pandemic. Thank you, Bob. Um, and uh, just to, to add to that, uh, Bob and I were not the only ones to uh, take a pay cut during the pandemic. In fact, uh, the entire team uh, across the board voluntarily uh, reduced the salary during 2020 uh, to ensure that the company was well funded through that time. Um, now on to some uh, perhaps more, more relevant points. Uh, what do the results at the CLP tell you? Claire, could you fill us in on the central license prospect results, please? Yes, thanks, Tim. Um, so the CLP or the central license package project, um, this is the district scale package that we have in central Cameroon. It's a package of eight licenses, which cover almost 3,600 square kilometers. Um, we've been working there since the licenses were granted um, a little over a year ago, February 2021. Um, and last year we undertook regional stream sediment sampling program, which identified gold anomalism in multiple drainage basins. And there was a strong association of those drainage basins, many of those drainage basins, um, with this um, structural corridor known as the Chiliri Banyo Shear Zone. Um, the corridor itself is um, has a strong association with gold mineralization and it's, it's renowned regionally uh, for having controls on gold. Um, so we were delighted as a first pass to identify that gold normalism. Um, but what it enabled us to do was then move to um, a semi-regional soil sampling program, um, which we kicked off at the end of last year. It was to cover an initial five soil grids. And earlier this year, we reported results from one of those soil grids. It's the first one that we've been referring to as the pilot area. And that was covering um, some targeted areas within the Undom and the Umbe license. Um, what it's delivered is multiple two to three kilometer striking um, long uh, anomalies uh, in the Undom license and also an 11 and a half kilometer long anomaly within the Umbe license. Um, that anomalous zone actually uh, ended in grade towards the western margin. And so we've moved towards um, putting a, a further soil sampling grid just to test that southward, southwestward extension. Um, it's early days, uh, but what I can say is that to have identified multiple anomalies um, from this, what is very early stage, first pass, wide space sampling is very encouraging. Um, also, the first pilot area has only tested um, a, num a small number of targets within two licenses of this eight, uh, eight license package. Um, 
And so as we start to get more results through, we, we expect and hope that we'll be adding to those number of anomalies. Um, the It really endorses everything that we've done uh, in terms of targeting this area and uh, the prospectivity of the region to identify gold anomalous zones. Um, we'll continue uh, the, the four additional grids plus that extensional grid over Mbe um, have uh, now been sampled. Um, so as we start to get those results, as I say, hopefully we'll, we'll get um, more anomalous regions identified and we'll continue to, to rank and prioritize those targets. But uh, the 11 and a half kilometer zone at Mbe, I think it goes without saying, um, is a high priority for us. And the teams have already been out um, undertaking rock chip sampling, line mapping, um, and we'll just continue to systematically advance um, the prospects towards um, eventual uh, drill targeting. Thanks, Claire. And I think if anybody is interested to see the uh, just how significant these CLP targets are, just go onto the website and, and have a look at some of the images there from both the stream sediment sampling last year and from the, uh, the soil sampling, which Claire has, has just talked about. Some really uh, stunning imagery there showing these these anomalies. Um, another question: Are we in discussions with any companies to create a strategic partnership to accelerate the exploration and development of the CLP? Um, I'll take this one. You know, we we are constantly um, talking to uh, potential partners. We're constantly talking to our peers um, in the junior, the mid tier, and the major sector. Um, we do feel that the, the central license package in particular and Cameroon in general is really is a, a new frontier for the company and globally for gold exploration. And so we really don't want to give away the farm too early um, by, by bringing in uh, partners on this too early. However, you know, the door's always open for discussion with, with groups and obviously the, um, the result any decisions made will be the result of discussion at the board level to ensure that whatever we do uh, decide to do is in the best interest of all shareholders. Um, so uh, that's as far as I will go with with uh, that question. Um, another question here, what information do you have about the listing of elephant oil in North America? Will you sell your stake once listed? Um, and this was uh, some previous uh, legacy investment uh, from prior to the, the current management and board coming in. Bob, perhaps you can speak to that one for us. Yeah, sure. It's in two parts. Um, the information we have on it is that uh, Elephant, we, we hold shares in Elephant Oil Limited, uh, which is, and the business of that is going to go into Elephant Oil Corp. And we believe uh, float on NASDAQ, uh, and hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, now, what we don't know is how many shares we'll get. There's going to be a share consolidation when uh, the shares in limited goes into court. So, so we can't really draw parallels with what we've got on the company's house register with what we'll actually get in Elephant Oil Corp. We don't know what price it will go on. Uh, we don't know the exact timing of it. And, and we don't know if there'll be a shareholder lock-in either, which is quite, quite normal in an IPO that shareholders will get asked not to sell for a certain period of time. So, you know, we know it's happening. Uh, we don't know how much it means to us. Uh, I saw a, a, a comment from Red Rock uh, Resources a little while back where they talked about many millions of, of value. It is probably worth pointing out they have about seven times as many shares in uh, elephant oil that we do. Um, but, um, you know, it, it will be a nice boost when it does come through. Um, in terms of where will we sell? I mean, I, I mentioned potential for a lock a lock-in on uh, existing shareholders but fundamentally fundamentally it's not our business to be a passive investor in a oil and gas stock so it, at some point you know we would probably realize but um it probably won't be as imminent as people would think thank you bob the next question are we seeing any interest from institutional investors um again i'll i'll take this i think um you know, we always engage with interested parties, whether that is uh, private investors, um, high net worth or family offices or uh, sector specific um, groups, uh, funds and uh, institutions that focus on early stage uh, grassroots exploration and development. 
Um, so we're constantly in discussions with these sort of people, um, as you would expect uh, as a management team. Um, are we seeing interest from them necessarily? Yes. Uh, Cameroon is a new story. It, it, it's We are unusual in that we are leading the charge in a new, a new district, a new frontier for gold exploration. And obviously people are interested in seeing uh, how we are progressing and they're interested in seeing um, what value we're adding to the assets with our exploration and how we're de-risking things by moving forward with licensing and um, you know just normal day-to-day -day, uh, transparent business processes in Cameroon. Um, do we have anybody waiting in the wings to invest huge amounts of money? Well, I wouldn't be able to share that on a Q&A session anyway. Um, but uh, you know, obviously, we we will continue to engage with these these sorts of groups, uh, both um, through the the normal for, formats of um, things like the one to one meetings, and also privately through uh, through our contacts. Um, another question on the finance side, probably one for you, Bob. Um, can we expect another placing and more dilution anytime soon? Yeah, thanks, Tim. So, so on the dilution point, I think I and I think the board see this differently to a lot of people in that, you know, what we're doing is taking um, capital to build value in Cameroon. We're, we've got early stage assets. We need money to build the value in it. So I, I don't see it personally as dilution. We're, we're adding to the asset base of the company. And I think um, if we can go to this graph uh, full screen it, this is actually, um, you know, probably some of, something our investors are well aware of on the blue line, which is our, our share price, but maybe not so well aware of on the orange line, which is our market cap. And it, it sort of illustrates the building value point quite nicely. In that, um, if I can take drawing on, um, as, as you can see, the market cap um, throughout this period and we did we did a small raise around here at the very start of Oriel uh, to get into Cameroon, but the market cap itself was bumping around the sort of you know two to three mark uh, all the way through um, early 2020, and then since then we've done two large placings. And as you can see, the market cap is actually now pretty stable in the six to seven eight million mark. I mean the share price bounces between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 0 0.6. Uh, but the actual value build is is pretty evident in that um, in the growth of the market cap. So the market understands what we're doing. We're taking capital. We're building value in Cameroon. Um, so so on the dilution point, um, you know, our view is we're we're building value. Um, another placing. I mean, the business model of 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 a junior exploration company is to look at what results they've got, work out what they need to do next to add value, raise money, and then uh, go and do the work. So at some point, provided we're having success, which we are, undoubtedly uh, there'll be a need to execute a new work program. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Yeah, I think that, that graph really uh, really does illustrate the, the continued value add uh, and the, the impact of of the investments that we've been bringing in. Um, let's go on to, what else do we have here? We have a question here regarding Iron Gold's exploration plans. What are Iron Gold's exploration plans for the next two years? Do you think they would buy Sonala from Oriel? Um, Claire, perhaps you can take the first half of that on the exploration plans and, uh, and I'll pick up on their uh, their expectations beyond that. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. <clears throat> so just to recap on where we are with Iron Gold, um, we signed a joint venture or an option agreement with them back in um, at the end of February 2018. And over the past four years, they've been um, spending $4 million in order to move towards a 51% position uh, in our Sonala license. And earlier this year, they uh, notified us that they'd met that obligation. Um, and so we're just completing the background checks and, and checking through the expenditure to make sure that it has indeed um, been triggered. Everything we're seeing so far um, is, is looking good, uh, that they have met that commitment. Um, and so we're hoping to be in a position um, shortly to confirm their 51% uh, interest. Um, 
Thereafter, I am Gold has the right to spend a further $4 million over a subsequent two years. That would take us to the end of um, February 2024. Uh, we actually met, uh, Bob, Tim and I met with the team in, in Dakar earlier this month uh, to run through the next phases of the work programme. Um, and we're pleased to see that there's a strong focus in their programme on Far Aid. That's the northernmost um, prospect in the licence and where we believe it's got standalone um, potential for resource development. And in fact, where we identified a maiden resource there um, in the second part of last year. Um, I mean, with anomalism extending over more than uh, six kilometres and some of the intercepts that Eileen mentioned earlier, the, 35 metres at 3.6 grams a tonne, 70 metres at nearly one and a half grams per tonne. Far is clearly uh, a strong focus from us, for us, and it's um, really promising that I am Gold uh, share that vision and really want to prioritise it in the, in the coming um, programme. Um, as I've mentioned, we're yet to formalise um, their position at the 51% interest, uh, but as soon as that's done, we'll, we'll obviously provide a market update and that will include some visibility on what the work programmes will look like going forward. Thanks, thanks, Claire. Um, regarding the second half of that question, um, would they be interested in buying uh, Sonala from us or rather our, our position in Sonala? Um, you know, it's always a possibility, uh, I would expect that they would continue to spend their um, their four million uh, for the phase two option, uh, which takes them up to a seventy percent ownership. Um, you know they're obliged to spend that to to meet that seventy percent anyway, and it would be sensible uh, and the logical thing to do to progress the exploration themselves, take it to that point, and then make a decision at that point. Um, you know it, it's possible they would make a bid when they reach that point, depending on on the wider strategy in in Senegal and in West Africa. Unfortunately, although we have very good relations uh, and very good um, connectivity with the team in country um, and with the West African management, you know, obviously we're, we're a, a junior license holding uh, company. Uh, we're not privy to strategic discussions by Iron Gold's C-suite and board. Uh, so I wouldn't expect to be, uh, to be um, told what their plans are in the future. Uh, until they get to that, uh, the end of our option two period. Uh, I guess the bigger question is whether we would, uh, whether we would want to sell. Um, you know, we we effectively at that point would have three options. Uh, we could simply sell our our thirty percent uh, stake, um, the Stratex EMC uh, joint venture holding thirty percent stake. Um, we could continue to co-fund. Um, at, at the appropriate uh, pro rata rate, any ongoing exploration and development beyond that, or we could decide not to co-fund, but to keep our position and uh, we have a backstop 2% NSR royalty uh, on this uh, on this agreement. So, um, you know, we have options to be either passive or aggressive um, and stay involved or simply to sell out. And really that discussion is something that we would only want to have at the end of their 70% option when they've spent another 4 million and continued to hopefully get some uh, some more good results in the Fari area and possibly even test some of the other prospects. You know, Sonala license, uh, we we focused on Fari and previously on Medina Barfay because those are the areas that I'm going to have explored today. But there are actually five target prospects on the Sonala license. And um, so there's a, there's a two that, that really haven't been touched by I'm going as yet. So there's a lot of opportunity still uh, coming along through that. So um, I, I guess it's a, a wait and see. We, we don't expect to get them knocking on our door right now. Um, and when they do knock on our door again, we will do whatever's in the best interests of the shareholders of the company at that time. Um, <clears throat> now, on whilst we're on um, Sonala. Uh, there's a comment on Senegal here, a question on Senegal. Chesa Resources released a positive scoping study at its Diamba Sud project close to Faray. What can the company take from these results? Um, I'll probably I'll probably take this question as well. Um, you know, we have very strong links with Chesa, um, most notably because I, I know the expression uh, VP there. He's been a good friend of mine for the last 30 years or more. Um, and we're, very, we're always very interested to see the progress because obviously it is only 10 kilometers from Fari. 
and they have had uh, really good success in developing uh, an initial amazing resource and building on that resource. And now recently they've published um, a, a effectively a, a PEA type study um, looking at the economics of that of that resource. Um, how does it tie back into us? Um, you know, what can we take from their results at the Ambassad? Well, our Faray target area is essentially, Dharma Sud is an extension of the Faray area in, in all um, sort of geological respects, structurally and, and geologically. Uh, very similar geology, uh, apparently similar metallurgically as well, although there's more test work needs to, be, needs to be done on our side for that. Um, it's very heartening to see that they're able to pull together a resource quite quickly uh, once they've gone into a defined resource driven program. And uh, we can obviously draw parallels, and, and the investors obviously can draw parallels between the value of a, of a low cap, low capex um, uh, uh, mine development uh, by Chesser, and what may come out at, at um, the Faray target. So, you know, the they, their deposit could be a proxy for what we have at Faray, but we simply need to do more work at Faray, or rather, Iron Gold does. And um, we have had seen some very significant results, which have already been talked about uh, over the last 12 months of program uh, at the various fire targets, far south, south and north. And, um, you know, we look forward to, to seeing how those, uh, those targets uh, develop in the next two years under Iron Gold's stewardship. Um, <clears throat> So a question here. So we have one just come in from uh, Kitan K. Tim and the board, are you satisfied that your focus is not overly concentrated on Cameroon and Senegal and not starving shareholder value development time across all of the promising projects and interests Oriel has across our portfolio, i.e. missing value accretion opportunities by neglecting their wider opportunities? Um, I'll take this. I think, you know, quite simply, our focus is Cameroon and Senegal because that's where we have uh, most of our investment and most of our activity. Senegal, we're free carried. So we're obviously focused on what Iron Gold are doing there and on overseeing the work that they're doing, um, auditing it both technically, uh, which Claire and I do, and obviously financially, which Bob does, um, because that's an investment. Um, they're, they're investing in our license. Cameroon is our main push. That's where our teams are on the ground working. Um, I'm not quite sure what you refer what you're referring to there um, by uh, not starving shareholder value development time across all of the promising projects. Our other interests are really just a bunch of legacy assets that uh, were held over from the old Stratex days. Now we have progressed um, investment into uh, the Egyptian and Djibouti assets, which were previously under Tarni Stratex. Both of those assets we own a minority position in. So we have no influence over, uh, although we are, I am a director on both boards. Um, both of those projects are being taken forward by private companies, uh, both in Egypt and Djibouti, uh, drilling and exploring and advancing and, and hopefully adding value. So as an investor, we are passive investors effectively in those assets. Um, as a passive investor, the value of those hopefully is increasing. Um, our other main assets are obviously in the Turkey uh, area. And um, again, they are mainly, um, Turkish stuff is, is mainly uh, royalty stuff. I don't know, Bob, whether you want to add anything on the Turkish assets at all? Yeah, the, uh, the, I mean, the Turkish stuff is effectively a, a, a rump of legacy assets we, we've had in Turkey. The history of the company was it started in Turkey, did, did really well. But we've got a few things left. There was actually quite a lot of value tied up in it. So we, we talked earlier, uh, I think Eileen mentioned in her statement, but $1.4 million that we're pursuing for the courts. Um, we've got about another million dollars worth of, of success-based and progress-based payments due to us on two uh, projects that we've partnered out. Uh, and then we've got the Muradea, um royalty system that um, we uh, is progressing um, through its EIA stage. We would hope, we would hope it'll get its EIA uh, in this half of the year. Uh, and, you know, we constantly look for ways of realising that it's, it's a significant, um, valuable, significantly valuable asset. Um, at the moment, I think the, the board's view is it's going to get an uplift in its value as soon as EAA comes. Uh, and therefore, 
uh, we should be patient on the sale of it. We, we had an opportunity to uh, engage and, and maybe dispose of it at the back end of 2021. But it, it, it just seems so close to a significant step up in value that um, we're, we, we're, we're moving forward with it for the next couple of months at least. Okay, thanks very much, Bob. Um, so what else do we have here? So um, can you comment on the share price movement over the last couple of years? Um, I, I'll happily comment on that, although if I get it wrong, I'm sure Bob will, will jump in. Um, Effectively, the share price is doing exactly what we expect it to do, uh, given our position on the Lausanne curve. You know, we are um, we are tracking along. We're, we're a company that is focused on identifying and discovering new assets in a new frontier. And until those new assets are, um, are new discoveries are made and mineral resources are attributed to them, we're, we we won't get a massive uplift. We we have had a value uplift even so, based on our market cap. Um, so as going back to Bob's graph, you know, the share price is one thing, but actually the market cap is perhaps a better thing to look at uh, when it looks, when you're looking to where we add value and whether we have added value. Um, Cameroon is effectively a new, uh, it's, a, it's a new gold district. There's no, there's no doubt about that. If you look at the images, you know, we have six new gold anomalous areas, the longest of which is over 11 kilometers, still open-ended, on an initial soil sampling run on two out of the eight licenses in the central license package. Um, now, having been in the industry for, I think this is my 33rd year, um, that is, is quite startling. And I think it, other people in the industry are seeing that as well, and, and Cameroon is certainly getting a lot of, a lot of interest. So um, that would be my comment on the share price. I, I expect that the share price will um, increase as and when the, um, uh, those assets continue to move forward. But the market cap is tracking with the investment, and uh, that's the important thing at this point. Um, let's have a look. Uh, well, while we're on financials, let's do a uh, stay with Bob. Um, Bob, how many shares... How many shares? What percentage does the board hold in the company? Please. Yeah, sure. So, so this uh, this always feels uh, low. One point three six percent between the board always feels low. But you've got to take it in the context of a company that was was about twelve years old by the time we we came in. Uh, so we don't have a founder founder share position, uh, but it's also an exploration company. So we need to raise uh, funds regularly, uh, and whilst the directors contribute to every raise. Uh, it's it's unrealistic to expect us to fund a drilling program between us. Um, so, you know, the the share equity shareholding is 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 not where we'd like it to be, perhaps. But when you look at what we've done on um, certainly the salary sacrifice option scheme, where uh, the entire board uh, at the time took four months salary sacrifice to get options, when you add them back in. Uh, to the mix and, and just include them in the equity. It's about 5%, which is a, a much more sensible figure. Thank you, Bob. Um, oh, we've got a clarification from Kitan K. Uh, apologies if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, to clarify what I mean, Oriel has retraced almost all its share price gains since last year's promising development. Just thinking management's focus on the wider portfolio may add to the story as people seem to have lost interest in it over the past six months. Uh, well, I, I'm glad to say that none of us here in management and, and the board have lost interest in, in it. Cameroon is getting more and more and more interesting. Um, there was a spike in the share price at the beginning of 2021 uh, based on no news at all. And we, we were obliged by the AIM regulatory markets to put out a, 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 a speed uh, speed warning on that, uh, put a notification that the, the price rise was not linked to anything. That's just typical movement along um, in this end of the market for um, you know early stage explorers in the Lausanne curve in that part of the Lausanne curve. Um, you know, investors, uh, I, I perhaps you have lost interest in the past six months on the assets, but trust me, Senegal. If you look at the results again that have come out over the last six months from the Senegalese drilling at Fare, spectacular, um, wide. Uh, good grading intercepts, exactly what you expect to find when you're looking for an open pit mineable resource. 
And similarly in Cameroon, uh, fantastic results in a brand new goal district. Remember that the central license package, 3,600 square kilometers, very, very few junior companies or companies our size have a, light, have a contiguous license package that large. Um, the results that we're seeing there are truly are spectacular. It is a brand new goal district. And um, just to, to uh, sort of strengthen the argument there, this is an area of Cameroon that had never had a gold explore, exploration license issued previously. So that really speaks to the technical capacity uh, and success of our geological team, both in country, uh, in Senegal and, and here in the UK. So we think it's massively exciting. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry that you uh, have lost interest in the story, but I would encourage you to um, perhaps go back, revisit the website, revisit some of those images and um, listen in to some of the more specific uh, presentations we've done on those um, on, on the Cameroon Central License Package. It really is a, a truly exciting place to be right now. Uh, some more questions coming in there. Um, there's a couple of, there's, there's a little bit of overlap through some of these here, so I'll just try not to be too repetitive. Um, we have uh, is there a need to raise monies well you know as bob Dunk has already covered that you know we we look to realize value from our legacy assets where we can uh where we can't do that we obviously look to raise money that is the model of a junior explorer uh, and that's one that we've we've subscribed to all along um, please, could you give us an update on Sonala? I think that's been covered already, um, uh, Mark. So uh, again, these questions will be will be put out to um, we'll be able to put written answers to some of these if we can't um, answer them today. Um, can you please outline your exploration plans for Cameroon in 2022 and how you intend to fund them? Uh, I think for the exploration plans, I'm sure Claire, you can talk to that. Uh, how we intend to fund them, um, I think we'll we'll leave that for now, um, because obviously we don't want to dive, <laughs> divulge all of our secrets um, to the market. But uh, Claire, perhaps you can talk to the exploration. Plan. Yeah, absolutely. I, I won't go over again um, the central licenses. Um, needless to say, we've we've completed the, the soil sampling program, and I've already discussed that we're doing rock chip sampling and. And mapping and working towards drill target definition at the Umbe um, anomalous zone. Um, but refocusing on uh, Bekasi Zone 1, uh, where we've completed most of our drilling at the Bibimi project, uh, we've already uh, pulled together a, a follow up diamond drilling program, um, and that will be commencing shortly. Um, that's the area where we've already identified significant um, intersections including 6.5 meters at nearly four grams a ton 9.2 meters at 1.3 grams a ton um, so this is a, a, a key follow-up target for us um, the program itself is going to focus strongly on testing the extensional sub-horizontal veins that we see uh, in the trenching and we've also seen in the core uh, because we think that they've got a strong um, role in um, where that localization of the gold is occurring and giving us the increased and enhanced volumes of gold um, and, and the wider intersections. Um, so we'll be focusing on that. We're also going to be undertaking some PQ um, holes. Um, and PQ is basically a wider diameter hole, um, focusing on getting um, increased volumes of sample. Um, and what that will do is enable us to get a better representativity of the grade distribution within our model. Um, so the Capital T drilling team will be mobilizing later this month to site. Um, and so we'll provide a market update on, on the full program um, that we've got uh, planned for there uh, in due course. Uh, and we've also recently completed a ground magnetics program over the entire license. Um, what were the key I should take a step back, not on the entire license, on the key four prospects that we've identified within the license to date. Um, and so that should aid with our targeting um, at the three other prospects, the Bikati Zone 2, the Lower West and the Lower East prospects, um, and really help us zone in on uh, those more dilational parts of the system where we feel there might be um, 
great opportunity for hosting enhanced um, volumes of gold. Did you want to? Did you want to take the other part of that? Well, I mean, just to say, really, that you know, obviously, closing in on, on the start of the rainy season in Cameroon, so uh, we're wishing to get a bit more work done. But traditionally, we've always taken um, the time in the summer to to get together as a as a board and get get some more geological input to talk about what we've learned in the in the previous uh, dry season, uh, and that you know, at that point. I refer back to the business model, which is, you know, look at the results we've got, work out a sensible plan, raise some money and go and execute the plan. So, you know, we've, we've, we will always be running that, that program. Um, you know, we need to see, see the results in, in, in the whole, you know, we haven't really got the GMAG results back in, 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 in much format yet. So we've got lots to look at uh, as we get into the uh, start of the wet, wet season. Thanks very much. I think just just to to uh, add, perhaps you know one thing that we have done uh, quite diligently in the last four years is really focus on a, essentially ring fencing uh, monies that we do raise to maximise the spend in, in very simple boots on the ground exploration. Um, you know we we've not only carried out massive cost reductions um, on on GNA and management of the company diversification we've, we've cut back on our, on our um, uh, areas that weren't really bringing in value and we've realized value from assets wherever possible so we've put a lot of fiscal control in and, and thank many thanks to, to Bob and to Claire for, for pushing through on a lot of those um, those topics as well as the the obviously you know bringing in money from things like the research and development tax credits 403,000 pounds this year uh, for, for 2021 from that and uh, about 300,000 pounds in the years preceding. So, um, you know, we are we are very disciplined in spending the money that we do raise or we do we do uh, realize from uh, assets in the right way, um, boots on the ground exploration and that really advancing. And that summer wet season is really a key to that, the ability to bring the team together and put together a plan a work plan, a schedule, and then a budget to that. Um, and then it's a matter of looking at uh, at the uh, the bank accounts and, and seeing whether we need topping up and, and what uh, what needs to be done to do that. So um, so that's that's where we're up to right now. Um, some more questions coming in. Um, one here from David M. Very few deposits eventually become mines, and those that do tend to be higher grade, shallow deposits with simple geology, good access, and low capex requirements. Although at an early stage, how do Orioles deposits fare on those points? Um, I think you know we are aiming for orogenic gold systems here. Um, the geology is reasonably simple, though the structural controls on it can be complex, and we are really focused on getting the right amount of data. To be able to interpret the structures um good access uh, well the central licenses the, the eastern five licenses have the main north south highway through cameroon goes right through the middle um the 11 kilometer anomaly that uh, that claire mentioned at Bay, i think on on uh, claire's recent visit to site it, it was you know you could see the outcrop from the road uh, it's very very close uh, and that's a tar road through the middle infrastructure is pretty good in that part of cameroon because there's a lot of agriculture to the north and uh, or, and uh, sustainable forestry as well so access is is pretty good similarly in senegal that area of sonala and areas east is is a well-developed gold mining area so there's a lot of infrastructure uh, in that area um all of our assets in west africa are gold focused we are looking at initially uh, particularly things like fare really lending itself to shallow oxide uh, open pitable with um, deeper higher grade tail type deposits, very typical of, of that part of the world. So, um, you know, they do stack up. Yes, the, the odds are against uh, discoveries going to mines. That is that is the risk at this end of the business, but that is also the reward at this end of the business. Um, you know, the junior sector is, is renowned for um, spectacular uh, bonanza type uh, discoveries and developments. And one way to try to uh, reduce the risk and maximize the opportunity there is to have good, stable, large land holdings in very prospective ground. And the Sonala license in Senegal is clearly that. It's an extremely prospective area, um, great geology, structure, alteration. Um, 
and similarly our central license package and the Bibamine Wapuzi targets in, in um, Cameroon. Great geology, ticking all the boxes for orogenic gold and um, good tenure on the licenses, brand new licenses issued last year. So uh, we think we're in a very good position to maximize our chance of success. And that's what we are doing. That's what our, our you know, the, the, the goal of any junior explorer is to maximize your chance of success. And, and we've taken all the steps that we can to do that. So I hope that answers your question, David. Uh, I'm just looking through. Um, there was a question on Tembo, I think we could probably take. Uh, sorry, Bob, I didn't see that. Oh, yes, there we go. Uh, Nathan P. Um, can you please elaborate on the sale of stock in Temo Gold, which had been held by the company for a number of years? The sale was presumably off market, but to who? The proceeds were around 150,000, but 18 months later, Temo shares surged, having announced a deal with Barrick. The Oriole stake would have been worth over a million. Former directors of Stratford joined the board of Tembo. So the question is, was the company approached to acquire the stock? Oriole shareholders lost lost 900,000. I don't think we lost it, but okay. Bob, one for you. Yeah, right? sure. So so no, we, we weren't approached. Uh, this was, uh, you know, as wished by most of our investors, this was the sale of a legacy asset at the start of uh, 2020. We actually started unwinding the position at the end of 2019. Uh, and and it was all completed in about January 2020, which it was kind of before anybody had heard of COVID. Uh, all, you know, all our shareholders wanted to sell legacy assets. We sold a legacy asset, and, and it's you know it's easy to say Barrick have, have now jumped in 18 months later, which would have taken an awful lot of foresight. But in the two years prior to this, Timber had, had effectively been flatlining and had been trying to talk Barrick into a deal throughout that period, uh, and we know that because you know we ourselves talked to Barrick about it to see if they'd be interested in it and they weren't so so why are they interested now well I would, I would guess because COVID came along economies crashed gold price went up Barrick all of a sudden see the value in this license not too far from them that prior to that they hadn't really seen a great deal of urgency to move on so you know should should we have held on well hindsight's a wonderful wonderful thing um but we would have had to foresee COVID, economic uh, destruction, uh, gold price rise, and Barrick getting back involved. So, and the change in political situation in Tanzania as it was. And well. the change in political, yeah, exactly. Which took a lot of war in Ukraine as um, well. well. <laughs> so, um, you know, shareholders want us to sell legacy assets, and, and then, um, you know, that's what happens. You know, yeah. we, we can hold and hold and hold, but. You know, don't you, you can't be judged on hindsight. Yeah, uh, uh, your comment on foresight. I think you don't need foresight; you need a crystal ball to be able to, to predict that. But uh, yeah, no, I think that's that's a very clear uh, answer, Bob. Thanks very much. Um, Commenting uh, would would be good to see more director buying at these such depressed levels. Thoughts? Well, Chair uh, Eileen <laughs> came in. Uh, uh, by the way. Welcome to your first Thank you. video. <laughs> um, you know, um, Eileen brought in as she came in. Um, what I think a lot of people forget is that the, uh, the board of directors and management are in a position to have knowledge. Uh, and often that means we are locked out. Uh, we operate what they call close periods. We can't always buy when we want to. Um, and we have, as Bob mentioned earlier on, whenever there has been a placing, we have all uh, always joined in those placings and those raising. So buying on the open market would be great personally if we had the opportunity to do so. But uh, buying and backing, if, even when we do raises, is perhaps more uh, valuable. I don't know whether Bob or anyone expand on that at all. Or... No, no. Um, you know, I would totally agree. You know, we, we have bought shares in the market, but effectively, you know, we, we get a bigger impact by putting shares into a placing. Um, you know, it, it it helps it helps with the process, um, and it's money straight to the company that we can go and use for exploration purposes. Okay, well, I I think we're probably getting quite close to time here, um, eleven fifty. So I think we'll uh, Jake will probably wrap up here, um, but I believe there is an opportunity for questions still to be 
Abs uh, absolutely, sir. Uh, that's great. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to address all of those questions that have come in from investors. And of course, like you said, we will make these available to you immediately after the presentation has ended. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll publish all those responses where it's appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet Company platform. And we'll notify you by email when these are ready for your review. Tim, perhaps for redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could please ask you just for a few closing comments, that'd be great. Certainly, certainly. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for everybody who's who's lasted this long through the presentation uh, and the Q and A session. Um, you know, we as a as a management team and board are very very pleased with where Oreo has got to uh, in the last four years. Um, we really believe we have some great opportunities opening up for us in Cameroon. We have a very stable um, legacy of uh, value across everything from our Turkish royalties through. Obviously, the, the significant potential value in, in Senegal on the Sonala license and various other investments. Um, but importantly, our, our main sort of value that we believe is, is in our team. We've, we've got a very, very successful exploration and management team, which has uh, really pulled together through the last couple of years of, of the pandemic when work was halted due to lack of ability to travel through uh, international borders. Um, you know all the all the associated struggles around uh, financing and funding exploration through that time, and we've really seen the entire team. Uh, that's everybody in across the across the Oriole team, uh, really uh, pull the socks up and, and get focused on it. And and the results are clear. Um, you know the central licenses, Cameroon as a new frontier, potential new gold mining district, uh, really shine out. Um, and we are pleased to be continuing to explore that and pleased to be continuing to um, hopefully advance uh, both for ourselves and also for Cameroon, uh, you know, a new country, uh, a new a new area for gold exploration in, in Africa. So thank you again to everybody for uh, submitting your questions and for listening in. And, um, you know, we do have our AGM next week for uh, on the 26th, I believe it is, Bob, uh, which is why we, we did this uh, Q&A session today. So hopefully all the votes will be in to support the Board of Management's uh, next steps in, in um, ongoing development of the company. Thank you. Tim, that's great. Eileen, Claire, Bob, Tim, Dave, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to update investors this morning. Could I please ask investors not to close this session? This will now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Oriole Resources PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good morning to you all. Thanks. Thanks.